Welcome back. So now we are going to look into MapReduce, which is the part one of massive parallel processing. There's, it's very um, buzzwordy, right? Massive, everything is massive now, gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes. So massive parallel processing one, MapReduce. So look at the stack, what we've done so far. That's incredible, we're already halfway through. It's seven, the seventh week of the semester. So we know how to store the data in S3, in Azure Blob Storage, in HDFS. Uh, we know some syntax if we want text like JSON, uh, YAML, and so on. We also saw data models in the form of trees. We can validate the data. We can store it back to HDFS or S3 as Parquet, for example. You can also store Parquet on S3 or HDFS. Uh, and that brings us to processing. How now how can we make all of that data dense around in the cluster in such a way that we can process it? Uh, and in order to start MapReduce, I actually have a field experiment for you. We are going to do it now. Uh, people on Zoom, you'll have a status bar, don't worry. Um, but where is it? Right here. So I went hunting from Pokemons uh, last weekend, and I, this is what I caught. And I need to count them. And that's quite a lot to count. So uh, I thought that I could actually uh, do it with you. So what I'm going to do, I have some slides to explain. Uh, so you know the Pokemons, right? This is one of those I know that Pikachu. Uh, the ones, I don't know all the names of them. But these are the tens that uh, I caught in various quantities. Now, this is what I want. I want to know how many of each one I managed to catch. This is the problem we want to solve. And the way we are going to solve it is in two phases. We'll call them map and reduce. That's why, where it comes from. But I need volunteers. I need eight volunteers um, who take a subset of that. Preferably somebody who have, uh, I, I, I need you to be able to write. So if you have a, a pencil or a pen or whatever to write, right? So eight volunteers. You can come forward, eight of you. All right, eight people I need. All right, here you go. And you have this, you need to take this for the pens also, please. This, yeah. Second volunteer here. This is where you write down first results. Another volunteer. This is for you. Uh, I will explain, I will explain. For now, you just take them with you. There you go. There you go. This. There you go. And for you too. There you go. And I need yet another. I have a last one. Do you want to do it? Or oh, great. Go ahead. Oh, you can borrow one, maybe one of your neighbors. If somebody can. Uh... All right. So now let me explain to you the mappers because you are the mappers. I'm asking you to count uh, the Pokemons, how many you have of each, and to write the number next to the uh, to, to the Pokemon sheets that you have. They are pre-cut uh, so that you can easily separate them. I'm not very good at doing these things, so it might be that the way I cut it was maybe uh, not, not perfect, but just try to make it in such a way that it's very clear that you have the number next to the Pokemon and that you can then uh, cut it, right? Uh, separate the, 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 the pairs. Um, all right, so let's do this. And then I'll explain task two. What you have to do, we'll shuffle around. We'll have four volunteers who will gather the pairs for identical Pokemons, sum that all up and write it to a resulting key, right? So they will compute the sums. All right, so that's what I want at the end. So now we have this beautiful status bar with the project, the, 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 the progress. So every time a volunteer, a mapper is done, please raise your hand and let me know that you have successfully counted the Pokemons and you have on the sheet of paper written down the total number of each Pokemon, right? Let me know when you're done. And the people on Zoom, what you see on the screen, the status bar, is basically what you see when you're actually doing it in front of a data center. Because of course, you don't see what's happening in the lecture hall right now, but when you're on a data center, you also don't see the computers doing these things, right?
it takes time, right? But this is part of the experience. I want you to see that it actually takes time. That's not the sort of things with MapReduce that is done in just a minute, right? And everybody else, observe what's happening because there might be a few things that happen that actually correspond to what's going on in a data center, like the time it takes, the distribution of the time of our people, and so on. All of that is relevant. Nobody done so far, right? I feel that some mappers are about to be done. I see some writing happening. All right, is anybody done? You are done. Awesome, perfect. So keep the sheet with you, but you can bring back the, the Pokemons in there. Put them back in the... Uh... Awesome. There were some important entries. Oh, yeah, that's fine. These are nulls. nulls. These are blanks. <laughs> All right, so we have one of eight completed. Two of eight, you can bring them back. Put them back in the, just keep the sheet of paper. Now we have three completed, four. So you see that's the, okay, no, no, that you keep with you. Ah, yeah, no. we, I'll tell you what to do with this. Thank you. Pokemon. The Pokemons you can bring back, yeah. All right. So keep the, the, the numbers with you. Thank you. Now we are at five, I think. You see that's the progress bar. All right, and keep with you the numbers. Thank you. And have a fifth one on the way. This is five completed. Six, wonderful, thank you. Thank you. Two left. Who is, who is left? Two, oh, you are done too? You can bring them back as well. So we are at seven out of eight. I should have make it nine, like seven of nine, if anybody gets the, the hints. Star Trek, thank you. And do we have anybody still mapping? I think I only have seven. You are still mapping, right? This is totally normal and expected, don't worry. This is exactly what happened in a data center, right? There's always, you're done? Awesome. We'll talk about that. It's called um, tail latency. I will tell you a few words about that in a few weeks and how to solve that. Wonderful. So now we are eight completed. Okay. Right, thank you. So now I will need you, all mappers, to separate the pairs into a distinct, like every, uh, every uh, and make chunks out of it, basically 10 chunks. And every time you will need the Pokemon and the number of one on one chunk. Do not cut between the Pokemon and number. 
but between the pairs of Pokemon number, right? So try to separate them. Now we need four volunteers, four volunteers to step up for the reduce part. They should not be mappers, yes? All right. So you are in charge of this one and this one. Other volunteers? Yeah, stay here. All right. I'm trying to try to separate it nicely. This one. This one and a third one because there's only four volunteers. All right, go ahead. And then we have I'm trying to separate it nicely here. There you go. And the three that are left are for you. All right. Now comes the shuffling part. The mappers need to visit the shuffler, the, the reducers here and give them the pairs that they are responsible for. So you need to show the, the pairs that you have and the mappers must bring the pairs to the shufflers, right? So go ahead and do the exchange. This is called shuffling. So stand up the mappers and bring the pairs, bring the pairs to the, to the reducers, right? You need to separate them, of course. observe because the shuffling is a huge mess and it's supposed to be that way that's exactly what happens in the data center over the network The complexity of this is quadratic. All right, I think we are done with two mappers. So again, everybody on Zoom, this is what you see on your machine once you have pressed the button, this kind of status bar. So the mappers are handing over their key value pairs to the reducers. If everything was fine, you should have eight of each. Yeah. Yeah, normally. Oh, you do have more. Oh, interesting. No, no, no. It's, oh, it's yours too. There is one for you. All right. It's making progress. Okay. So you, you still need to do the addition. Uh, and yeah, but we'll do, we take care of it after the shuffling. You need to add per Pokemon and write them back to uh, to your outputs. Okay, it's making progress. All right, I think all the mappers have transmitted their key values. All right, so now the reducers are going to start, and now raise your hand to tell me when you're done adding up the uh, the Pokemon. You need to do the sum for each Pokemon. And write it back to the to the blank one. So now we are officially in the reduce phase.
And the reducers are basically, they, all, they have all the key value pairs, the key value pairs corresponding to the Pokemons that they are, the Pokemon, there's no S as I was told uh, by, by Martin, the Pokemon that they are responsible for. And now they are computing the sum of the counts. And then we have the grand totals at the end. So when the reducer is done, please let me know as well as the number of Pokemons that you have. Jordan, do you have the, the final results? Yes. Thank you. So that's two of them. Thank you. Four. Uh, yes, you can bring them back. We'll, we'll throw them away. Or you can put them in the... All right, two are done. Oh, you can ju just do your best. It's okay if there's inaccuracies. <laughs> ah, how many did you have? Two, three, three. So we are at five out of eight. Thank you. Thank you. Can I throw this? Uh, yes, of course, in the in there. Thank you. Oh, there are actually 10 Pokemons. I should have made it a progress bar with a granularity of 10. I think we are about here. I have seven out of 10. And I think they're on the way. So you see on Zoom, this is what I'm getting back. I'm basically getting back these pieces of paper like this, and I have the counts that came from the reducers. And the last one, I think we are about here now. So again, that's an example of tail latency, right? You basically have plenty of machines executing. There was almost always going to be one or two that, uh, that uh, take more than the others. Wonderful, completed, thank you very much. And we have 105 Pikachus, right? You can see here. All right, this is what I wanted to do with you. It's a live field experiment with the Pokemon that was actually MapReduce. So technically I could end the lecture here and say that's it, you know MapReduce, but of course there will be a, a bit of theoretical parts that is now going to follow. Because as you imagine, we don't do that with uh, actual people. We actually do it in a data center using machines. But the principles are very similar. So let's go to the theory then. So what we have so far is a parallel uh, file system, HDFS, Hadoop distributed file system, where we have the data spread all over thousands of machines. What do these files look like if we actually look closer with the sort of things we want to process, the Pokemon basically that we want to count. So we might have billions of text lines spread over maybe multiple files, but we might have billions of text lines. We might have also text lines that look like this, right? Billions of lines. Every time I have like 2023, 17th of April, 57 minutes, streets, and so on. Uh, I might have line structure like this, maybe a bit compressed here. So of course it's expected that I know what this means, right? 
2023. And so who knows what this means, actually? Yes? Uh, it's time stamps. Yes, these are time, time stamps, exactly. Yeah, but where? 57 minutes, Canton Schwitz, 2023, nothing in 2020. Who knows The spring festival in Zurich. So these are all the, uh, the, the measurements of the bug that the bug took uh, to burn. So I can have them as key values like this with the spaces, the year on the left, and then some duration on the right. I could have it as JSON like this, right? That I have a year, a duration, a date, a canton, and so on. I could also have that in binary value, and that's totally fine. Maybe it's stored as parquet. Uh, and uh, typically, the way it's stored is that we don't have just one file, but we have plenty of files. In fact, what we call shard is a file within a directory with, let's say, 100 files. This is called a shard. The name of these shards typically will be called with numbers, part one, part two, part three. Um, the reason why typically a data set doesn't have a single file but many files is that it was previously output by a query on MapReduce of Spark. And this is what we get. And that's going to be the inputs of my next uh, query, right? So plenty of files. I might also have HBase, right? Maybe I have it stored in HBase with these XML files or maybe directly values here stored in a table. Uh, maybe I have XML documents. As I told you, it's possible to have XML inside HBase. So maybe this is what my data is about. I might even have a schema right here in XML schema. You see, it was useful. That says the kind of data that I have. And then I have one document in every cell of my, uh, of my table, right? And so what we are about to do now is query that data. And you see, it doesn't matter what it looked like. I showed you maybe 10 different ways that the data can look like. It doesn't matter which one. In any case, we can query that data. And the way we are going to query it, as you might imagine, is going to be in parallel. So we are going to actually be aware of the blocks in AGFS, these 128 megabyte block. We are going to query them like this, right? And if you like art, then this is basically what it's about, right? We are going to uh, process the data like this. Um, so the rationale behind uh, MapReduce is that generally, if you think of the problem on an, from an abstract perspective, you have input data. It might be one file or a directory with 100 files, and you want to produce output data also in a directory with plenty of files. And in between, you have a query. And it is that that we want to do now, the, the query. So MapReduce is a beautiful and extremely simple framework that is at the same time incredibly generic and powerful. You can use it for plenty of use cases. You would never imagine the tons of things you can do with this. And the idea is that the data, the input and output, are going to be uh, stored in chunks, blocks, splits, partitions, shards, whatever you call them. And then we are going to query nicely in parallel. Of course, that's what happens in a beautiful world where everything is perfect, that we can actually express the query like this. And it means that every chunk of the input is going to be nicely mapped to a chunk of the output. And then you can do this, this on one machine, another machine, another machine, and so on. It would be nice if we could do it like this, right? But in the real world, this is what happens. It's not like you can nicely do everything in parallel. It's more spaghetti in the sense that in order to compute, let's say, this chunk right here, in order to produce that chunk, you might need data from all over the place. So it's much more complicated than just doing it in parallel, right? Uh, fortunately, in reality, it's somewhere in between, right? So it's more like this. At some places, there's a flow in parallel in the way that the query is made. And at some other places, it's the spaghetti, right? In fact, we've already observed that during the Pokemon, right? This is what happened when we had the mappers who were uh, uh, filling the numbers with, uh, the, with their uh, chunk, right? This here is a chunk, right? This is a chunk. And I'm showing on Zoom, like this is a chunk with that, that uh, the mappers got. And so they all did it in parallel. Then the second phase that was a bit of a mess was the shuffling. This is because every mapper needed to give pairs to every reducer, right? So this is where we have this quadratic complexity 
that is, uh, that is much more problematic. And then it's followed by another phase that we call reducing, but the spirit is the same, it's in parallel, right? When the reducers computed the total sum for every Pokemon, they did it in parallel. And this is the essence of the justification for MapReduce because the moment you notice that you alternate between mapping, shuffling, mapping, shuffling, mapping, shuffling, mapping, this is the essence of it. And in fact, what MapReduce does is this in just two steps, mapping and then reducing with a shuffling in the middle. This is MapReduce. You have input data that is spread all over your cluster. You map it in parallel and it doesn't communicate between the mapping, it's really strictly separated. At the end of the mapping, the intermediate data is shuffled around. This is the huge mess in the cluster. The data is just dancing around from machine to machine in a quadratic way. Then you have the reduce phase and then you have the output data that gets written down. Back to HDFS, for example. Now, I talked during the shuffling of intermediate data. The intermediate data, uh, oh, it's the one we threw away. So the intermediate data are basically the pairs that are the outputs of the mappers, and that's what the, re the, the reducers got when they started their work, right? That's the intermediate data. That's the one that travels through the cluster. Now, you already noticed in the case of, uh, of the Pokemons that the data is actually made of key value pairs. Looks like this, right? You basically have the keys and the values. So these are all key value pairs that, uh, that are basically um, consumed and created everywhere. So it's like when you have a hammer, you tend to see everything in the world as a nail. It's exactly the same thing. When you have map reduce, everything is a key value pair, right? Consumes key value pairs, produces key value pairs. So the input data is key value pairs. The intermediate data is key value pairs, gets shuffled around. And the final output data is also made of key value pairs. Now, um, typically we do it in a host language like Java or Python or, uh, or whichever language you like. And there are types, right? So the keys and the values have specific types. Here I just uh, wrote type one uh, with uh, uh, Indo-Arabic numeral, then Roman numeral, and then the Latin alphabet, right? Just to give an example. So the key has a value. It could be an integer and so on. The value could be a date or a JSON object and so on. Now, what happens very, very often is that the intermediate data has the same type as the final data, right? This is what happens with the Pokemon. We had Pokemon integer key value pairs in both the intermediate data and the final data output by the reducers, right? But the, the input was not uh, technically the same because these were the individual Pokemons, right? That, that you had on the, on the piece of paper. All right, so now, I will do a logical walkthrough in the just four minutes that remain, and then we'll continue tomorrow. So logical walkthrough, walk through. what happens? I have my billions and billions and billions and billions of key values. That's my input, right? If these are not key values, we just force them into key values, but these will be key values. Then we split them uh, in uh, chunks, right? Mostly corresponding to HDFS blocks, as we will see later. Then I have basically these chunks of key value pairs. Then I apply my mapping function to every one of these, uh, of these uh, key values, right? But chunk by chunk. And then I output these intermediate key value pairs. The one you see on the right can be zero, one or more uh, intermediate key value pair for every input key value pair. And so if I do it on the chunks, I might see something like that, right? So I mapped key one and key two to uh, these three intermediate key values on the right. I mapped key three and four here, so these key values to this and I map this to this, right? And now this is my intermediate data. So I'm going to put it back in, into a single, it's logical, right? That doesn't happen physically, of course, but on the logical level, I have this collection of uh, intermediate key value pairs. I can sort it, right, like this. So all the key ones together, all the keys twos together, all the key three together. Then I can again separate it nicely into key values that have the same. So these are all the Pikachu's and so on, right? So this is how it's done but you need all the keys that are the same together and you need all of them together, not partial, everything. All key ones, all key twos, all key three. Then you execute the reduce function on the group that has this key, right? They are all here. You reduce to some output, in that case, key A, right? Very often it's just key one with the sum of the values, right? But like I was generic here and then that's it, right? Uh, so that's what happens if you have the same types and typically you, you keep the key 
and do the, the sum of the values. Uh, it might be zero, one or more, so it doesn't have to be exactly one output. You, you might also output zero or more. And that's it. Now you do it in parallel, exactly like what, with what we did with the Pokemon. So I have this group with key one that gives me this key value and so on. And that's it. That's the summary of what happens. We have the input key values. We apply the map function. We get intermediate key values. We sort them logically and regroup them by identical keys, one group for each identical key. And then we apply the reduce function to each group for every intermediate key. This is MapReduce. For whom does that make sense on the high level? All right, and today, we'll, uh, tomorrow, we'll continue with the architecture of MapReduce. I'll show you how physically this is implemented in a data center, right? So uh, thank you very much uh, for attending today. I hope the field experiment uh, was fun to you. And uh, tomorrow, I'd see you at 9 a.m. in uh, HGE5. Thank you very much, and uh, have a nice rest of the evening.